I love retro beat em up style games. The old Streets of Rage games, Turtles in Time, the more recent Shredder's Revenge, the pinnacle Streets of Rage 4, Dead Island Retro Revenge is not one of those games. They took the idea of a beat em up type game and they made it an auto scroller. Welcome to completion number 19 of the Potato Backlog Project. Stick around to the end of the video for the Tater Raider and let's have a quick look at Dead Island Retro Revenge. Probably the strangest and most notable thing about the game is the main character and the way they absolutely tried to make him sound like Jack Black. I had to Google to see if it was him or not. It was that close. Here's some examples. You tell me what you think in the comments. Look at those sweet moves. How did you know that this is my third choice? Ow. <laughs> Dublin. Don't take it personally. As seen from orbit. Don't make it personal. This feels entirely on purpose and just such a strange thing to do. Jack Black has nothing to do with this game. I just wanted to share that in the video because it was so weird. Released in 2016 as part of the Dead Island Definitive Collection, Retro Revenge feels kind of like a mini game add-on. Like this should have been included somewhere inside the actual main game itself. It is available for sale separately now from that collection for around five bucks, depending on what platform you choose. The only relation to the Dead Island series I could find here is that there are zombies in the game. You start out as a guy chilling out playing some video games during the zombie apocalypse and some inconsiderate thugs decide to kidnap your cat. We never really find out why, but it's reason enough for him, the main character, to gear up and hit the streets to save him. I was 100% ready for a kind of B-tier OK brawler beat em up game. I didn't set my expectations very high. I just thought maybe there'd be a little bit of fun here as I really enjoy the genre. But then I hit level one and find the game is an auto scrolling game. The only freedom of movement you have is to move up and down to switch between one of the three available lanes. This was a major disappointment for me, but I played through to see what the game had to offer, which wasn't a ton. You have four basic attacks to choose from. You choose between three different special moves and three different magical attacks at the start of the levels. You have three hit points of health, and the idea of the game is to time the proper attack sequences against the proper enemies to make your way to the end of the level. There are a good amount of different enemy types, and the game gets progressively harder as you work through it, but that's about it. Not much depth here. And once you memorize the attack sequences that work for the different enemies, it doesn't take long to rip through the levels at all. As thin and shallow as the game is, there are a couple things I enjoyed about it. The look of the game is cool and fun. There is a CRT filter you can turn on and off depending on your preference. It makes it feel like you're playing an old video game on an old TV. And I kind of started enjoying the difficulty of the game in the later levels. It became strangely addictive and I had to keep playing until I completed it. Overall though, the game is kind of a throwaway experience. Not the worst game I've played, but I guess just disappointing because I was expecting something a lot different. One happy potato face out of five. And that's purely for the strange effort they went through to have a Jack Black sound alike and kind of look alike character. Super weird. And with that quick one, the Potato Backlog Project rolls on. Thanks for watching. Be kind to yourselves and others that deserve it. We're on to the next one. Let's go. Stick around to the end of the video for the Tater Raider. <laughs> The potato radio. The tater radio. The tater radio? The tater radio. Um, three different special moves and three different. Let's go.